So today we're gonna to talk about Chicago 1893. And I wanted to show some pictures because when we think of Chicago, we think of temporary buildings. We think of all of this as temporary. That's what we're told. But in Europe, the buildings are not temporary, but in Chicago, they're temporary. So let's go through and see some pictures of what Chicago used to look like in 1893. Now look at this detail. Does this look like it would be temporary? Look at the archways, look at the water, the fountain. Imagine crafting the fountain, then crafting the water as well. All of the quartz and granite and stone. And also the question is, if this was all quartz, granite, and stone, wouldn't this be fireproof? Then we go to the next picture. Look at the archway. Now you've seen these archways in all different countries. Anywhere that you visit in the world, you'll see the exact same archways, same architecture somebody's creating all over the world fountains then we go back more archways and then you have the statue which was made out of gold I've seen some pictures where you could see the gold in this statue and then you have more beautiful statues and then look at this and this is what you'll see in San Francisco you'll see this in New York City you'll see this in London you'll see this in Austria you'll see this in all the different cities across the world and then look at all those lights. Remarkable amount of electricity for a time before electricity. More temporary buildings as they tell us. And then this is an interesting one because this looks like a full blown city, but somehow these buildings were temporary for the world, world Fair that they tell us. All of this was temporary. And then the bridge that's still in Chicago this looks like the Museum of Science and Industry, which still remains, but they've kind of taken away all that detail. And then look at all the detail. And then you have the people who came in. Now, if you look at Mines Unveiled, they had some talks about orphan trains and the potential shipping in of people. But look at this. Wouldn't this bring tons of tourism? Why would you get rid of something like this? Here you go, another beautiful building. And what's interesting is in San Francisco, these were considered the portal buildings. That's what they called them. And here's a beautiful look of the entire Chicago 1893 and, the, and that gigantic Ferris wheel, which could hold 5,000 people every ride, which is absolutely remarkable to think about. And then crafting the water line. And then you have the obelisk and all these beautiful Then you see more. And this was the railway, it says, where the trains came in. Now think of transportation at that time. Transportation was mostly horse and wagon unless you came in on the train. So then imagine moving all of this, all of this material by horse and wagon and then sculpting in the middle of Chicago. Now remember, this was all put together in two winters. That's what they say. Two winters, somebody crafted all of this and then lit it up and up applied electricity as well to it, which, you know, takes more time too. And you can see how big these, these pillars are compared to this little man. And then you see more crafting of the water. You know, to move the water is one thing, and then to build all of this is a whole nother thing. You get more pictures. You get what you believe is Paul Bunyan, but that could be a fabricated story as well. Then you go into here, you have more people, and you have little wood boats, which is interesting. You're building buildings like this, and people are on little wood boats. You have an area right here, which looks like you had almost like a mud flood. You have no sidewalk at all, but you have this beautiful building that you built, which would be very challenging. Then you see more of the lights, tons of electricity. Looks like they were very eco-friendly at that time. And then you have more statues, more statues. You know, to craft all of this too would take time. You'd have to have so many people working and making it all perfect. Like every flower is exactly per perfect, almost like they 3D printed it, you know, to make it exactly the same. And then you got totem poles, which is interesting. More buildings. Pictures really just kind of show you something. And then the thing is, is where's all the people? For these size buildings, you would think there would be tons of people all around. 
and just more, as they say, temporary buildings. I mean, just stunning architecture. And, and you see this in San Francisco, you see this in New York City, you see this in St. Louis. Just remarkable. And then now here's the people. And remember, they said all of this, in which I'm going through and showing you, all burned down in a fire. And here's some guy working the pump veils. Oh, here you go. This is a great one. So this is the interior of the fountain, working pump veils, and then electric fountain at night. So while they were building the temporary fair, they were also installing the pump valves so that they could use the fountains and installing the electricity all at the same time and putting all these pipes in there. Interesting. And here's the guy who pretends to be standing there. More electricity, more pictures. And then this is a good one. The movable sidewalk. Think of this, movable sidewalk. I mean, this would be a tourist attraction alone if you could just go on that sidewalk, go out into the middle of Lake Michigan and come right back in. And look at the detail. And look at all those antennas. Atmospheric antennas. Statues. And then here's the different buildings. They're always the same names. The, the agriculture building, electric, electricity building, transportation building, mining building. It's always got the same names in every single city where the World Fairs took place. And then you got more pictures of just absolutely stunning, stunning architecture. And the people look very lost. You know, they look very disconnected. You know, people on horse and wagon versus this is just night and day. And then now you have the transportation building, which if you were building a building like this, you would think your transportation would be very advanced. Then you see all these atmospheric antennas as well. All different types of materials to gather the atmospheric energy. You know, you can look into Herman Plaus 1908, all of his work with atmospheric energy. And then you have the transportation building. And this is in a time, you know, you're, you're trying to survive. So you have to think about the times in which you're trying to survive. You need to grow food. You're living in Chicago. You have brutal winters. It's challenging to grow food. And you're building in buildings like this at the same time while trying to do that. And even if you had the population of 500,000 to maybe a million that they say, I mean, think of the time it would take to build all of this. And also, you don't have power tools. You have no power tools at all. You just have people. People get tired. You know, even, even people who work hard, they get tired. And then you got all this glass, this bohemian glass or quartz, all up on top. So now to lay that and do this design and build the arches and build the bridge. And that's why I like this book so much because it's 999 pages of all the old world buildings that were in the Chicago 1893 World Fair. And here's another interesting one. You got cactuses. So now you're transporting plants across the country because there are no cactuses in Chicago. They cannot survive. And actually, this plant too as well. This grows here in Arizona. It's a beautiful one. The little flowers up on top. So then you had to transport all of that and then put that into the ground in front of this building. That was usually an agriculture building or horticulture at that time. Then you have your fisheries building, which is another interesting one. I mean, look at the detail. You know, imagine sitting there with a hammer and a chisel, trying to chisel all that out. And you see a lot of architecture like this, too, in India. When I went to India, it was absolutely remarkable the detail that you see. Just stunning things that you can't even comprehend. I mean, these are little snails. Every single one, perfect. Perfectly sculpted. Not an error. Not a flaw. Now, there are people who do great work. Can't discredit them. But you have to think of... The challenge that it would be to make this all within two summers, 1891 to 1893, and you only have about maybe four months to work because it's brutal, brutal winters. You got more buildings. Oh, now the buildings are getting bigger. Just absolutely massive. 
and the person, the people. Look at how tiny the person is. This is a great representation of the size of this building versus that person. It's a very interesting statue right there too. And then just grand architecture. More grand architecture. I mean, just absolutely stunning. And then you have people who took photos, they attended, whoever these people may be, wherever they got shipped in from. They might not even live in that region. They could have got shipped in there. Who knows where they came in from. More stunning buildings. Here's an interesting one. This one says it's under construction, which is interesting. And then here's another under construction photo. So everything we just looked at was all created from just these two photos. And then they're building a little one back there. And look, at it looks like there's snow all over the ground. Because it's, it's in black and white, but it almost looks like snow. So then imagine having to build through the snow at the same time. There's some snow up on top of that roof. And see, that one looks like a regular building. That looks like something that somebody would build. It looks like some brick and then maybe some wood up on top. These looks like some wood slabs just kind of all thrown together, you know, to kind of pretend like you're building it. And if we go back, because we actually should think about this too, it almost looks like they're taking that apart versus putting it together. I mean, you got angels up on top. To get that up on top too, I mean, that's another feat. And then right on the water, just absolutely stunning. Agriculture building. And here's the one that's always the most important, I think, that people should see. And I will actually pick up that one just so you guys can see that. But that says abundance. And that word was written on every building. Abundance. And when you look at these buildings, you think of abundance as well. You think of prosperity. You think of beauty. You think of connecting to your, to your soul. And this was written everywhere. Now, the reason that a lot of this was destroyed and removed was to put us into a fear state or scarcity mindset. But, I mean, people look like they were living pretty, pretty darn well. You got the beautiful electricity, which then you think these lights were lasting a real long time. Like the centennial bulb of California. You have more beautiful statues. I mean, and then now what's funny is you start having all these different buildings. You have the women's building, and then you start having some additional buildings, and they start listing them off in this book. You go into the different, like, countries. They start calling them different countries. You have the mining building. So the electricity building, which, same thing, ether, tapping into the ether. And then more of the electricity building. Let me just go a little forward here for you guys so you guys can see this one. I mean, just stunning architecture. And then the question is, is who is this person? For what we've been told? You know, the stories we've been told and everything? There's no people in this picture. But who is this person? Who are the people of the statues? Who are all of these people in these statues? They don't have names. We don't know of them because they've destroyed these buildings and all this architecture. And then you get into here, you got the Palace of Fine Arts, and this is the Museum of Science and Industry. This looks very different than the Museum of Science and Industry in 2023. And also, where'd all the water go? That's a great question. Looks like there used to be almost like a small stream in front or a river or a lake, and that's gone next to this big, beautiful, what looks like Capitol building. And then you just keep on going. And then you get into all the different states. And here's a cannon, they say, which is interesting. Is it really used as a cannon? Or was it used as something else? And then you have the German buildings. And then you have some interesting ships for that time that don't kind of add into that. Movable sidewalk once again. And then this looks very detailed. You know, when you look at this, this looks like a very detailed city. 
all the buildings are already there. So they weren't really temporary, as we were told. And then you get to this Ferris wheel, which is just absolutely insane. This is like an apartment complex per Ferris wheel. Little piece to sit in. You know, 20 to 100 people maybe in each going around. Which, then think of how much energy it would require to move this. If this is 50,000 tons of steel, and you have all those people, where's all the energy coming from? Something to kind of ask. And then here's the line to board the Ferris wheel. So you can spin in a circle, and you can get yourself a ticket, and look at all those people. You can see all their heads in there. You can take a hot air balloon. Remember, they got rid of all the blimps. Can't tell you about that one. That's a free energy one using helium. More on the Ferris wheel. And then this is the turnout. All these people being shipped in, what it looks like at some large reset. Then you get more into the German buildings. And it's interesting. Then you got old Vienna. And remember, they had a World Fair in Vienna too, where they reset. That area. Got more here. And then we'll just kind of skip in a little bit because these are going to be all the Vienna buildings. And then they took some buildings, turned it into a circus. Typical. And then you move to Egypt. Seeing lots of Egypt in here. And then you get into Turkey. I mean, that doesn't look like a Turkish building to me. But it's interesting. You start looking at all of this, and they started naming all of these buildings. Like, here's a castle. And they're like, oh, that, we'll call that the Irish Village. We'll just throw that little sign on there. And then this one, this one looks like this, so we'll call this the Chinese Theater. And then we'll move to these. We'll call them St. Peter's. Then we move to these. We'll call that one the Algerian one. And then another building, we'll call that the Persian one. And then we keep going. Another castle, just hanging out. Interesting piece for Hawaii. What leads into that? It says the greatest volcano, but this building, this doesn't look too temporary. It almost looks like they fenced it off. And then you just keep on going. You got deep sea deep diving, and this is an interesting one too, Bulgarian and Bulgarian, so you see the play on the letters, switching the letters, so then what is correct? We know Bulgarian in 2023, but in 1893 we have Bulgarian. So a lot of switching of the, of the letters and the words kind of show us a little something different and mess with our minds. So we don't know, when it comes to pronunciation, we don't know what's 100% correct. Turkish village, and then we have the ladies exhibit. And then we have the beauty exhibits. And they have like a lot of different exhibits in here. Brazilian building, Canadian building, Victorian. And this is where they just start naming all these different buildings. French government building, which does not look temporary at all. Now this looks a little more temporary. You could kind of maybe put this together, but this, with this statue and this level of detail, while building all the other buildings and building all of this and these beautiful designs. And then you have the Kentucky building, Indiana building, Illinois, New Jersey, Massachusetts, New Hampshire. They, just, they were just building it all at that time. And then these guys who were playing the instruments, they look like regular people. And you just got more buildings. But I guess when you look at all these pictures, my question is, who built all of this? Who knew of this technology? Who built like this style? Who built like this all over the world? This looks like, you know, the Coliseum, which we have seen in Buffalo, New York, and we are now seeing it in Chicago as well. And then these were the horses that they were using, which they look like regular horses. They don't look like super horses. Maybe this one is kind of a powerful horse. 
But you kind of look at all this and you go, these look like regular people. These buildings don't match. These cows look a little jet, that's for sure. And then that's what's left over. Now, what's interesting is not everything burned. Only these things burned. This building looks perfectly intact with all those statues in the background. That statue is still perfect. The water's still there. All those buildings that I just showed you are still there. But only selected things burned, which is interesting. I guess my question to you guys is, what do you think about all this? And should we do a part two and show more electricity and all the insides of the buildings now? I mean, it just it is just wild when you get into all of these pictures. But what are your thoughts? And should we do a part two?